Yeah. Collision. Now, this is a bit hard to explain here. Not the match, or the matches, or the segments. It's going to be hard to explain what the title I just put on this video is. That wins now, wins matter again. Yeah, it's obvious. I put that on there because of what's going to happen going forward with AEW. If you haven't heard, Tony has decided to go back to a ranking system. Now, there's going to be a lot of people like JD may be happy about it. Just Alex may be happy about it. But then there is a major issue with it. Let's make this clear. There are going to be people who are just flat out happy about that. And then there are going to be people going to say, Oh boy, this is going to make things worse. And if you don't understand, I'm going to explain it. Look, when AEW started, they wanted to be totally different from heavy, heavy, overused characters, over, not very good stories, but huge amount of Vince McMahon stories that people just couldn't stand. There was almost no wrestling, all characters, all Hollywood crap that was pissing people off from WWE. Let's make that clear. That is the thing that was making people angry. They couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand that there was very little wrestling, so much cinema, so much character, not even good characters. It's kind of like what's going on with pretty much general TV from Disney and movies from everybody else. They're producing huge amounts of movies, but they suck because they're developing the wrong way the characters are supposed to be. People want good and evil. People want sensible stories, sensitive stories. They don't want ideology, whether, whatever ideology they're throwing at you, whether you like it or not. That is what movies are doing now. And WWE was doing that heavily in the late like 2010, all the way until Vince was finished from the company and is now basically a stooge in a position that he thought he was going to be able to get what he wanted. But now, like I've said, Ari Emanuel is now the new owner and not we don't know how much worse he's going to be than Vince or how much better. It's still very early. It's less than a year and no one understands that. But... This is what we had. The, the purpose of AEW was to stop that. They wanted, they wanted more wrestling. Not saying they didn't want characters. They just wanted more real, honest-to-goodness wrestling. And they gave it to us. But one of the major issues was there was not a way to, in the ranking system, to make it possible to make stories work with the rankings. Because it was so rigid People were getting pissed off and Tony wasn't getting too happy about it because the ranking was so prevalent, there was no way to interject any type of stories or any type of characters. It was just too, it was just too rigid. So that's the reason why he started going away from it until, and that's the reason why Cody got pissed. I think one of the reasons Cody got pissed when they started going heavily away from it and started making it way more character driven. And now... He's deciding to go back. And this is what we got right now. The beginnings of the rankings coming back. But can the rankings work now, five years later? I'll explain when I go through this. Now, Mox versus Shane Taylor. Now, we got a guy from OH versus Moxley, who just did a match in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I didn't see it. I saw only the snippet they showed on the screen. It was very brutal, but in the end, he won. Now, does that do anything? New Japan Pro Wrestling, yeah. Here, I don't watch New Japan. Not because I hate it, it's just I don't watch it. So it's very hard to really get invested in what happened to Mox and then go to a, just a blank, cold match with Shane Taylor because that's what we got. We got a cold match from Shane Taylor. We didn't get any build with Shane or Mox. Basically, if they knew each other, they never said they ever knew each other or even wrestled one another until this match. So, it felt hollow. Not because of the wrestling itself, it was because there was nothing behind it. It was just a plain match like we normally get. No story behind it. No character development behind it. 
no payout for a character or for any build going next. We just get a match. And Mox won when Shane passed out. I believe he passed out. What, did he pass out? Yeah, Shane Taylor passed out. I'm not saying the match was bad. I want to make it clear. The match was good. It wasn't a bad match. But we are talking about no character development for Shane Taylor, no character development for Lee Moriarty, and nothing that's really more for Mox until he spoke after that saying, you know what, I'm pissed off. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. I don't care if you're someone I knew, someone that I'm mates with. I don't care. I'm going to want a fight. That's the character development for Mox. Kind of like what he's been doing. And that is, he's sick and tired of all this crap. He just wants to fight and do matches. Ergo, the ranking system. And that is sad. You know why? For me personally, you know what I want? I want Moxley to go away for three months. I'm saying it now. I want Moxley to leave AEW for three months on a damn vacation. I want to feel refreshed from him. You know what he feels like? Dean Ambrose from WWE. The only difference between Dean and Moxley is Dean Ambrose was never in the main title scene for multiple times. Moxley has been. He needs to go down the card. That means he needs to go away. And he isn't. Moving on. At the, the Adam Copeland Open Challenge. <sighs> no build into it. He just announced he's doing open challenges. Yeah, well, I know people would say, dude, what happened when he did say that last week? He did. Yeah, he did. But he didn't say it in front of Tony. It would have been better in front of Tony Khan that he had gone to Tony. Yes, I know no one really likes to see Tony on screen, but he needed it. You needed a Adam Copeland to go to the freaking boss and say, Tony, I need to get back to TNT. I need to get back a Christian. I need to rebuild myself. I want open challenges. This is one of the times you need a general manager. I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes you need a general manager. This is one of those times. You need it because instead of him going into the ring and announcing it, in this situation, you needed someone there because it feels like it's empty. It feels like the inmates are running the asylum. And in this case, they need focus on collision. They need a general manager. They may not need it on Dynamite, but they need one on collision because there's no one running it. There's no CM Punk, so there's no focus for the show. So, they need a general manager. Whether they go back to the rankings or not, I'm just saying. And we get this match with Dante Martin. I'm going to tell you, that was a rough match. But it wasn't rough for Adam. Now, doesn't mean that I didn't see him hit his head on the back here really hard when he did that, when Dante did that powerbomb. It made me a little nervous. How big of a power bomb that Adam took that made his head go that 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 made me a little nervous. But he seems to be okay. And the one who got it rough was Dante Martin. Because they're trying to put over these open challenges for Adam Copeland. And they got to. Because after what just happened, Adam has to become not a friendly neighborhood. Like like Spider-Man. Not to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He needs to become Venom. But a good guy Venom. Not a bad guy Venom. You still get Venom who is... But an anti-hero almost. In, his, in Adam's case. Not Venom. Venom really was just Venom. But you get my point. And when he talked to Tony, Giovanni. You got that. You got him still putting over Dante... He did have his match with Lee Moriarty and, um, and what was it, Griff, um, Griff Garrison. I almost forgot his name. He did do those matches. He's done three so far. He made it very clear, what was I thinking? These guys are hungry, but they're not, they're, this is not cake or anything. This is, this is, this is a steak dinner for me. This is just pork chops. No, no, that was, um, 
Tony Storm, sorry. This is like steak dinner for me. And honestly, after the way Adam Copeland talked when he did the scrum when he first came back, well, first came to AEW and did his first match, that goes along with his character. He wants competition. He wants to go up against so many different people he never had a chance in WWE. So this goes along with it, I'm just saying. Now, let's get this done. <sighs> How can I say this against Queen Amatera? Amat Am 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 Amatra. Queen Amatra from West Africa and Thunder Rosa. A little sloppy. Making it clear, it was a little sloppy on both their parts. The queen was sloppy. She's boom. <laughs> Let's make this clear. She's a beautiful woman. Queen Emma, 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 Emma Tina. I think that's her name. Emma Tina. I'm, I'm mispronouncing it until I see her more and then I'll get her name down, guys. I'm sorry. I am dyslexic. I've never been good with names. Writing them was never easy. But saying them was worse because my crazy brain always turns it in certain parts. Like the letters in my head, if I'm pronouncing a name, will flip. Even if I'm saying it. So I may reverse the N in the T or the T or the S. It happens. Sorry. If it's Ambatia, I'm sorry if it's mispronounced. I will get it eventually. But seeing that she went up against Thunder Rosa and both of them were a bit sloppy. Yes, Thunder Rosa just came back and she was a little sloppy. No problem. It wasn't that bad of a match. When she had a match with um what was it? Um Sky Blue, Amadon, and and um Julia Hart. Because I had to think. You seem to go like this. I had to think. Her work was not bad because she was working with someone that generally she has kind of worked with before. I'm sure she worked with Sky Blue a little bit. I'm sure she worked with a little bit of Amadon. Well, she didn't have to wrestle her, but Sky Blue and a Julia Hart. I'm sure she's familiar with them before she went out. They were working with her in the back because she knows how to train people. So she probably is familiar with them. Queen Amatia? Nope. You could tell the way both of them were working, it was un unfamiliar to each other and they were a bit sloppy. Now, I'm not going to tell you that Thunder Rosa was bad. Other than that, if she was ring rusted, if she was sloppy, no, she wasn't that bad. But I will say this. When you see Thunder Rosa before and Thunder Rosa after her back problems, the major issue you see is that she's slower. Let's make this clear. Thunder Rosa can still wrestle. And it's obvious she was wrestling pretty good, even though it was a bit sloppy because she's not familiar with this woman. But you could see, instead of going like this, she was like this. It was, instead of this, it's this. She's slower. That's something people are going to have to get used to. Because let's make this clear. Thunder Rosa's back is always going to be an issue, no matter what anyone says. Even she is not going to be 100% honest about it or want to be honest because she wants to wrestle. But it's obvious she has to change her style a little bit to deal with the lower back problem. And even though, like I said, her ass got bigger, her legs got bigger, and that's to compensate for her lower back problem. She had to work her ass off doing whatever exercise is necessary to correct and to compensate for her lower back problem. She had to strengthen her legs and strengthen her butt talks because her butt is bigger now. It is. It's, it's just bigger. It may not be like Queen Amatia, like, boom, but Thunder Rose is like, went from boom to boom. She's bigger. She's like, boom, and now she's a little bigger. And you could tell her legs are much more larger. Her butt is a bit bigger. And you can see she bulked up a little bit here. You can see she had to bulk up to compensate. She won the match. But do I believe that... And I know people would say, well, it's good that she didn't have that match with Chris Statlin or 
a Willow Nightingale or a Britt Baker if she was available. Wrong. I would have wanted her to have a Chris Statlander or a... I know no one's going to agree with me when it comes to... Or Ruby Soho or a Willow Nightingale. I would like her to work with a Willow Nightingale because I know she can handle it. Because she has worked with Willow before. She's known her before. And I would have wanted her to be with someone more familiar with her on a pay-per-view because she deserved it. And if anybody says again, I'm going to say below. And I know they're going to say, dude, you don't get it. You're going to mess up Chris Statlander and a Willow Nightingale st stories. Really? What are they doing now? Tell me what they're doing. We're halfway trying to convince, if that's still going on, that halfway is still trying to convince Chris Statlander to turn heel, if she's even going to turn heel. Would have hurt her if she had faced Thunder, Thunder Rosa and lost. Actually would have helped her. It would have. It would have helped Thunder Rosa and it would have helped Chris Statlander. Thunder Rosa would have had a match on the pay-per-view which she deserved. After coming back from a really messed up back. She would have worked with someone that could have helped her story. That Hathaway stating, you are better than this. You shouldn't be losing to Thunder Rosa. I'm telling you, it would have helped. But nothing. And if you love Thunder Rosa, you'll agree with me. If you love Chris Staten and you don't want her to lose, or a Willow Nightingale, I don't know what to tell you. Your girls are not doing anything right now. I'm saying it. Let's move on to a match that was good. And it was a huge cluster. And that was Garcia versus Buddy Matthews. You got House of Black, you have FTR, and you had Daddy Magic. Magic, not Magic. You, you see I'm dyslexic. I mess up. Daddy Magic. He was on commentary. You know, I think Daddy Magic should be on a commentary team from now on. I'm not saying he can't still wrestle. And now he can wrestle. But when you hear Daddy Magic, you really feel like he should be a color commentator. He's not a bad... He's not bad on the mic. He isn't. So you see this match... And it's a hard-hitting match. At one point, left knee of Buddy is messed up. And we get the story of that. Now, was it wise to let Daniel Garcia win? Yes. They need to do something with Danny. But Daniel, I know you can just call him. I'm calling him Danny. But basically, he did deserve to win that match. If they're going to really do something with him, like maybe he wins another title. Not a ROH title, but maybe the International Championship. Or go up against Eddie Kingston and feel really legitimate where Eddie could put him over. I'm fine with it. Now, after the match was over, there was just one huge brawl. And now we get Dash, Cash, and Danny Garcia versus House of Black in Eliminator, Six Man... <laughs> So you're going to do a steel cage that is an eliminator match where someone can be eliminated and they'll just keep going until there's only one person left. That's going to be interesting. And it's sad they do not have a pay-per-view to do it. But in this situation where they're doing something with the House of Black, which really, what are they doing? The only ones that are really benefiting from this is FTR, it feels like, because they really don't have anything to do. What is FTR doing? They're not going after the tag championships. They're not. And it's like, what, what are we doing here? Are we setting them up to go after the all-age tag titles? No. The only tag titles that make any sense is going to be the main titles. But then, are you going to take them off Big Bill and Ricky Starks? Not now. So, I don't know what to tell you. Now. Roderick Strom versus Matt Seidel. Now, the reason we had this match is because Matt Seidel had a match against a... Well, I don't know who won the match because I didn't see a Rampage. So, I don't know who won. You're going to tell me, I'm sure. But I didn't see the match because I did the SmackDown review. But we get this match because of it. And these two know each other. These two have roommated together. And we got no build. 
What the fuck? You could, if you're really going to do something with a Roderick Strong, since he's part of the Undisputed Kingdom, why not build this up? Making it clear that no matter who you are, even someone I've known you for years, couldn't you take in two or two weeks or something, or three weeks maximum, to at least let Matt Seidel have a match? Roderick Strong, they're talking to each other, and Roderick is trying to be convinced by Matt Seidel to stop acting like an idiot, working with the Undisputed Kingdom, and he is listening, and then he tries to take his head off. Not the Undisputed Kingdom, not, not Warlow, not Adam Cole. It's just Roderick. Building him up to show that he can take on anyone. Particularly someone who's known him for years in all age. No. Have a match. And you 100% get Roderick Strong winning. And he looked like he gave him the worst. Oh, that side, that, that knees to the back was just devastating. It looked really good, and he won. So this is what we got. Now, let me say this about my tasteless Tony Storm. Do I love this woman? Yes. Do I want to marry this woman? Yes. Because I want to see her in the mirror. And this is me. It, I, I know I'm not going to ever meet her. I'm never going to marry her. And she ain't going to give me the night, at night or day. But if I was with her... When she went home for real life, when Tony herself goes home and she decides she wants to do a little bit of practicing before she goes to Dynamite on a Rampage or Collision, she goes in front of the mirror like many wrestlers don't think they don't to see if they can get their stick down to, be, to perfect themselves because they are perfectionists. They want to make themselves, oh, some of mine, they want to make themselves mean something. And they'll go in front of the mirror and let's see her going. And I would go up to her and say, you still practicing, honey? Yes, I'm still practicing, you dope. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in, that, be in that room as she's practicing on me. It would be so damn funny. And it, it would make my ass laugh. I would love it. But what do we get in this segment in the back? With Luther and Mariah. We get her setting up her final and first confrontation with Deanna Perrazzo. And she made it very clear that, Deanna, I remember you when we were in the land of the rising sun. And you were jealous of me, but your skills were interesting. And now I am not the same way. She's going like this. And literally, she says, I am going to end you. I'm going to chew you up. I'm going to eat you. And you can see Mariah saying, uh, eat? And you know the type of look a person gives when you think of eating, not food or cannibalism. The other one. The other meat. Let's, let's make this clear. It's talk, she's talking about the other. It sounds like she's talking about the other meat. And then she says, I'll chew you up like a steak. No, like a pork chop. <laughs> I love this. I love it. I don't know about anybody else. I'm sure they like it. But I love it. It's funny. But it's obvious that they're really trying to make this mean something with Deanna. But the problem here is that's it. Tell me, what's Julia Hart doing? Is it on Rampage that we see anything? Is it on RHTV? It's not a collision. So, we just had the world champion collision getting something set up. And what do we have with Julia Hart? Now, I'm sure someone's going to tell me that there's been something set up. But should it be a little more than that? Should she already had something set up for quite a while and they're building into it and doesn't feel like there is? The only thing she's doing is something with Sky Blue. And she's not even part of the House of Black. This gets me the most. You got Julia Hart, who's part of the House of Black. You got Sky Blue who is not a part of the House of Black and should be a part of the House of Black so she would mean something. We're not doing it. I'm just saying. Final match. We got Eddie Kingston and Ortiz versus Brian Danielson and Claudio Casanoli. This was an interesting match because let's make this clear. 
The way they're building this is that either Claudio, or in this case, Brian Danielson, do not like Eddie Kingston. They cannot stand him there. They can't stand the Mad King or the bum, the king of the bums. They cannot stand him. They hate him, and they don't like that he's not holding just one title, but three freaking titles that none of them could take from him. And they are angry, and they want the titles. They're making it very clear that he's a nothing, a nobody. They can't stand him. And he is, let me get to you like this. When they start the match, Brian Danielson is trying to get under the skin of Eddie Kingston by playing to the fans, making them cheer for him. And then Eddie does the same thing. They're doing everything they can to make it clear that Eddie Kingston is not as popular as either one of them. And yeah, Claudio didn't do it, but it's about... Brian Danielson in this situation, because I believe what's going to happen here. They're setting up two feuds when it comes to Eddie Kingston, if I'm right. The first feud will be with Brian Danielson. The second feud will be with Claudio Castagnoli. It's going to make the best sense if they're doing it the way I see they're doing it. Because once Brian Danielson is done, I have a feeling that when it comes to Moxley, he may actually start having a feud with Brian Danielson. Because he just said he doesn't care who it is. I am going to come after anyone or do anything to win. And that is Mox. So I feel like this is going to be doing three feuds. One feud for Eddie. Another feud for Eddie. And then one feud for Brian. And then another feud for Brian. Which eventually will come with Moxley. That's what I believe might happen. But the match was very good. It was not a problem. In the end, we got the Blackpool Combat Club winning. And Eddie getting treated really badly. It wasn't Eddie Wake, depending, it was Ortiz. And Ortiz apologized. But as he's right next to Ortiz, you see Brian Dennison in his face saying, you're nothing. You're not keeping those, those titles. And he spits in Eddie Kingston's face. He just goes, Tuh! he spits right in his face. And everyone noticed it. And that is how people do not take well. Look. I'm a New Yorker. Eddie's a New Yorker. Ortiz is a New Yorker. It doesn't matter what part of New York you come from. We don't take that well. If we're in real life, even I, a very gentle, awkward, and shy person, if you do something like that even to me, the New Yorker will come out. And even I will get angry and I will do something that I probably wouldn't expect to do. New Yorkers do that. So, seeing that they are trying to set up a Continental Championship match. And that's good. That could lead not only to at least several weeks to a month going into Revolution. Not saying it'll be a Revolution. I think that might be Claudio Castagnoli. But it looks like they are setting up a match between him, Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston to try and get that title back. Well, not get back, but kind of get a rematch of trying to get that title. And then when that's over, and then Moxley comes into it, and Brian Danielson goes with him, if I'm right, you will get Claudio who's going to step up next. And it will be about Claudio dealing with Eddie Kingston, who has the longest running feud of AEW right now. They've known each other for more than a decade and a half. And the way they broke off from each other, it's still considered the most thing they hate. And this would go with the triple, triple crown. It makes the best sense. But this is just me. Haze. Hey.